Hi everyone, this is Arnaud Pujol, co-founder at APBP Consulting GmbH. I'm a mining engineer with more than 15 years of experience. Before starting APBP, I worked for Lafarge Olsim at the technical headquarters, focusing on block modeling, deposit estimations, and quarry design. I started my career at Crystal X International in Venezuela, mining gold with a focus on drilling, blasting, and short-term planning. I have a Master of Engineering in Mining from Imperial College and I'm a registered member of the Society for Mining, Metallurgy and Exploration. In the last week of October 2018, I was blessed with first-time fatherhood, moving apartments and garden leave. Too bad I forgot to play the lottery. Today I'll introduce you to the direct estimation approach, a methodology developed for the cement industry for reporting raw mix resources and reserves and the software we use to apply it. Atos Geo Blend. So let's dive into it. By the end of this presentation, you'll understand the difference between the mining and the cement industry when it comes to estimating resources and reserves. You'll learn about the direct estimation approach and its advantages for the cement industry, and you'll know what you need to implement it. I won't describe any of the reporting codes in details. First, some background information. The pressure is increasing on the cement industry to report resources and reserves figures. This is coming from various stakeholders, such as the authorities or the shareholders. The problem is that the reporting codes, existing protocols and software packages for estimating resources and reserves are focusing on the mining industry. So the question is, how should the cement industry estimate its resources and reserves? And that's what I will address in this three-part presentation. First, we see what principles the mining industry is using for estimating resources and reserves, and why it is unsuitable for the cement industry. Then, we'll discuss an approach that fits better the needs of the cement industry, what we call the direct estimation method. Finally, we'll address what you need for implementing the direct estimation approach. But first, let's start with some common ground between the mining and the cement industries. For both, resources and reserves can only describe materials with a reasonable prospect for economic extraction. Here on the left, you see a typical resources and reserves classification scheme adapted from the chalk code. You have different resources and reserves categories that depend on your degree of geological knowledge and confidence in your models. To go from resources to reserves, you need to consider modifying factors such as mining, metallurgical, economic, marketing, legal, environmental, social, and governmental factors. Basically, a mining resource is a volume of material that has a reasonable prospect for eventual economic extraction, while a mineral reserve is an economically mineable part of it. So, how do you estimate them in mining? In mining, the estimations are based on cut-off grades. These cut-off grades are themselves based on economic and process parameters. Economic factors are the sale price of the commodity you mine, your fixed and variable costs for mining, concentrating and refining this commodity, and economic parameters such as the discount rate. The process aspects are factored in through the recovery rates you get at each process stage and the production capacity at each of these stages. On the left, you see how the estimation is done for a certain cutoff grade. You get a volume with a corresponding average grade above that cutoff. For instance, here, for a cutoff grade of 1.45 gram per ton, you get around 1.1 million tons of material at an average grade of around 2.4 gram per ton. Typically, the higher the cutoff, the lower the volume and the higher the average grade. How does this translate in terms of strategy? High grading. You want to get to the high grade mineral zones as fast as possible with a minimum amount of stripping to get your investment paid back as fast as possible. This results in a series of pushback pits, each one of them designed to maximize your return for your chosen cutoff. Well, the issue for us is that high grade raw mix doesn't exist. Cutoff grades do not apply in cement. You need to blend different rock types such as limestone here on the left and clay here on the right and other materials 
to obtain a mix that hits your narrow quality targets while respecting your environmental constraints. You can only tell if a bench within your quarry can be used for raw mix production in conjunction with all the other materials entering the process, not by applying a cut of grade to it. In fact, if you just go after high grade limestone, it might end up being very expensive as you'll need a lot of good clay and costly correctives such as bauxite, high grade iron, and sand to hit your quality targets. So, the cement industry needs its own estimation method. And I'll now introduce you to the direct estimation approach, which fits better our needs. It's holistic, versatile, and cost effective. I know that holistic is an overused word, but for cement, it's the only method that makes sense. With the direct estimation approach, you integrate all the parameters of the cement manufacturing process to optimize the lifetime of your deposit. A Toast Geo Blend sits at the heart of this methodology. It's a software designed to maximize the quantities of raw mix according to all your input parameters, from GIS data to mining parameters. The program is based on linear optimization and designed to handle the calculation of raw mix ratios correctly, such as lime saturation, silica ratio, and alumina ratio. You combine all your constraints and data in a single raw mix optimizer. GIS data, such as properties, permits, or infrastructure. Your deposit in the form of block models, correctives such as bauxite or sand, and alternative materials, such as contaminated soils or industrial wastes. All your requirements, such as quality targets, emission limits, and production costs. And finally, mining parameters such as working bench layout, final pit, and mining directions. And what you get out of this is an estimation of raw mix resources and reserves. But this approach goes beyond that. Once in place, you can address all relevant what if questions regarding your deposit, which makes it very versatile. Establish the right balance between cost and quarry lifetime, as illustrated here on the left. Assess the impact on the deposit lifetime if you change your quality targets because of changes in the market or because you want to optimize your products or produce an additional one or because there was a change in the fuel mix. You can also evaluate the impact of changes in the emission regulation on your deposit or even anticipate changes in the regulation. You can also estimate the impact of a new corrective or alternative material on your mining plan and finally, you can also assess the raw mix potential of your properties or properties you still don't have if you have a block model for these areas. And then you can decide to buy or not or sell or not. Here is a concrete example of a deposit assessment performed with a direct estimation approach and a Geo GeoBlend. This is a resource estimation stage of a real project. You have the inventory of the deposit derived from the block model on the left of the graph. So you have around 211 million tons. Different formations occur in the deposit, different Mars, different limestones, some dolomite and overburden. That's typically what you obtain after modeling your deposit. It's nice, but it doesn't tell us how much raw mix we'll be able to produce with the targets highlighted here in the middle. The first scenario was to assess the deposit on its own without any external material. The results were quite disappointing as only 7% of the deposit could be converted to raw mix. We realized quickly that iron was needed to get more raw mix out of this deposit. So in a second step, we evaluated three different sources of iron with Atos GeoBlend. These materials are different iron contents and costs. Iron 1 turned out to be the best solution in terms of deposit use and costs. However, the use of the deposit was still quite low, with around 60%. So to improve the use of the deposit further, we decided, together with the management of the cement plant, to assess three external sources of schists, which also had different qualities and costs. The best solution is then up to the management, prioritize lifetime, of cost. But at least, you get the transparent picture, which can help you decide which way to go. As you know, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. You'll have to invest a bit to implement the approach. 
but this investment is largely compensated by the issues you can avoid further down the line. You need to invest to establish reliable block models based on adequate exploration data and 3D geological models. You can then control a lot of potential issues directly at the source by selectively mining your quarry. Fixing problems further down the line is of course possible, but most of the times it's also more expensive. For instance, you can fix problems at the raw mix preparation stage by using more and fewer correctives, which are more expensive, and you lose opportunity to use alternative materials that are cheaper or that you can even get paid for. At the production stage, you'll have to use noble fuels, losing opportunities to use cheaper alternative ones. You can control emission with abatement equipment, but this is expensive. You might get fined for exceeding emission limits or lose your license to operate. You will have more keen stops and blockages, which results in higher maintenance costs if you don't control your raw mix at the source. Finally, you might lose market shares due to low quality products or have less volume to sell because you produce too much or spec link. So we are convinced that Atos GeoBlend and the direct estimation protocol are the way to go for the cement industry to estimate its resources and reserves. Now let's have a quick look at what is required for implementing it. To put it in place, you need the commitment of your management and alignment within your teams. But the good news is almost all the rest should be available within your organization. For proper implementation, you need to train your key personnel continuously. The implementation also requires the long-term commitment of the management, as access to raw materials is a long-term game and is key for the sustainability of the business. Finally, you should integrate the protocol to your company raw material management policy. The rollout is an excellent opportunity for breaking silos within your organization. Indeed, all teams must be aligned to obtain the right balance between production costs and quarry lifetime, your quarry team, your quality team, and your production team. The good news is that almost all you need is already available or should be available within your organization. You should have block models of your deposit, preferably based on adequate drill data and 3D geological models. And you surely have competent personnel like geologists and or mining engineers. You might miss the software to integrate all your data and optimize them, but we can help you with that. So in a nutshell, we saw that the cement industry needs its own method for estimating resources and reserve, as the one used in mining isn't really suitable. We're convinced that Atos GeoBlend and the direct estimation protocol are the way to go for the cement industry. And in fact, you just need a change of perspective for its implementation. So what should you do now? First, contact us for a live demonstration of our approach and attach GeoBlend to your raw material experts. Then align and decide which one of your plants will benefit the most from the direct estimation protocol for instance, a site using large quantities of external materials. We can then help you consolidate your data and perform a joint pilot project at that site. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.